In this video, I'm going to talk about some habits that can change your personal finances permanently for the better. The title of this video talks about being financially stable, but it goes far beyond being financially stable. It can drastically increase your income. It can drastically increase your understanding around personal finances as a whole. And it can just make you feel better and give you that peace of mind that you've always wanted to have. And you do that through habits. They say that your habits are a direct reflection of where you are today. So the habits you've been having for the past month, for the past year, for the past decade, those are reflections of where you're at today. And that's an incredibly powerful thing because a lot of us don't realize that what we do every single day are bite-sized pieces or building blocks that lead to where you're at right now. And I just wanna take this video to share with you some of the habits that I've been doing throughout the years and what has really helped me financially. And here's the kicker, they don't always seem like financial habits. They're not really financial in nature, but because of where they put your mind at, because personal finances is mainly just mental. It's not so much physical or head knowledge or any of that stuff. It's just how you are as a person. So if I can help you with habits that have helped me, that is what this video is all about. If you don't know me, welcome to the channel. I'm Reggie Bryant. I'm the author of The Wealth Journey, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. We're going to jump straight into this topic. The first thing I want to say is going to the gym slash being health conscious. I've been going to the gym for 13 years now, and it has been life changing. It's something that, first of all, I found a very big passion in lifting weights, getting bigger, getting stronger, getting more cut, you know, basically molding my body to where I want it to be. It's like sculpting, you know what I mean? It's like making a sculpture, but you're doing that on yourself and you're able to pick and choose what you want to lift, what exercises you want to do, and how your body looks. And as I got more into that, I got more into nutrition and what I should be eating. And just naturally, when you're trying to hit your peak as far as strength, as far as just how you overall look is, if you want to be cut, if you want to be lean, whatever your goal is, your nutrition has to match what you do in the gym. What you do in the gym is important, but what is arguably more important is what you eat. And me being extremely conscious about what I'm eating and stuff, that's what's helping me get those results. And I say all that to tell you this. First of all, it gives you discipline. It gives you drive. It gives you motivation when you see those results. And especially when you push yourself to go to the gym, when you really know that it's the last thing in the world you want to do, when you push yourself to run, when you know it's the last thing in the world you want to do, something powerful happens in your mind. And it gives you the discipline. It, and that in turn gives you consistency. And so if you want to get consistent results, that means you have to be in the gym. You have to be working out. You have to do the work, but you also have to eat right. And that is where the first piece of advice actually comes from. When you're conscious about what you eat, there's certain things that you're straight up not going to eat. You're probably not going to be going to McDonald's, Taco Bell, Chick-fil-A, or any of those places. Sure, they may have healthier options, but nothing is really going to be healthier than I just said, at least. Nothing's really going to be healthier than going back home and cooking your own food. And what you find a lot of people in the fitness industry eating is stuff like salmon, quinoa, brown rice, white rice, sauerkraut, kale, spinach tuna sandwiches, making themselves protein shakes, all these things I just named, they are extremely low in sugar. As a matter of fact, a lot of those things I just said have like zero grams of sugar or like one or two grams of sugar. Sweet potatoes, things like that. These things are extremely important. And so you're not going to be going out to eat a lot and you're going to be cooking at home a lot. And I've been doing this lately and it wasn't even a financial goal of mine really to cook every single meal at home. But I've seen extreme results in just cooking at home. And sure, you can say that it's boring food and that it's super healthy and no one wants that. But if you want a certain result, you got to do what you got to do. And then on the weekend, that's when I decided to eat out. So it's gotten me to a point where I'm eating out less. And this is the last thing I want to say. Um, at my gym, we do body scans. And I found out that I was 16.1% body fat, which is pretty good. But I found that out like a month ago. I was like, eh, I want to get down to 15 Right now, after putting in all that work and watching what I'm eating and cooking more at home, I'm down to 14.7%. Now my goal is to get to 14 flat and then just keep it that way and obviously still work on gaining muscle. But as you can see, your diet has direct control over the amount of fat that you have in your body. So that plus physical activity, that's going to make you 
more financially stable because you're going to have that consistency. You're going to be consistent with paying bills. You're going to be consistent with cooking at home, eating healthy, consistent with getting results. These things work as a team to then make you a better person, not just physically, but financially. The second thing on the list is reading slash learning. And this is something that I recommend doing every single day. You have to gain the skill of learning to look at what you're lacking in life right now and then reading a book from someone who is way better than you at that skill or at that objective or whatever the case is in life, right? Whatever the area in life is, read a book on it. Read several books on it until you start to gain competence around that that specific subject. Because when you gain that knowledge, now you're able to then go apply it. Before I was 21, I never knew like the first thing about personal finances, but because of the fact that I was reading and always researching and learning and looking up, how much money should I make in my industry? How much should I make as an industrial engineer? Because that's what I went to college for. When I learned what I should be getting and what I absolutely should not settle for, that gave me the confidence to turn down a job offer when I didn't even have any other options at the time. They were like, we'll give you $18 an hour. I'm like, I don't freaking think so. I'm fresh out of college. What do you think this is? Y'all done lost your mind around here. Uh Uh-uh. I'll take nothing before I take that. And then next thing I know, I got a job offer for 60K a year. And that right there, that was what I was expecting to get. So I took it. I didn't care if that was low balling or whatever. I have to start somewhere, but I'm not going to start below my expectation and below my standards. So that enabled me to create a standard for myself that builds financial stability. Because if I was living off of 18 an hour at that time, I would have been drowning in bills and debt and everything else. But what's more is even after I graduated, I continued to learn. And in this case, I was like, well, I want to learn how to budget. I want to learn how to save. I want to learn where to put my money because I don't know how anything works. I don't know how taxes work. I want to learn everything I can learn. Started reading Dave Ramsey, Robert Kiyosaki, guys like that, Tony Robbins. And I got the knowledge base that I needed to get started. And I didn't agree with every single thing that I read, but that wasn't the point. The point was I'm learning from people who are better than me, who are way richer than me. And because I'm able to get that knowledge and have my free thinking coupled with that, now I'm able to really get somewhere in life. Because budgeting and saving is the baseline, but everything else is what takes you to the next level. That's what gets you to build wealth. And that's actually what led me to create my own book called The Wealth Journey. And it's done very well on Amazon. You can check it out up here. And it allowed me to put my own experiences, my own story, and my knowledge based on my experiences, things that have helped me succeed that can also help you succeed. So it was an extremely good passion project of my own that I made. And this also put some money in my pocket. So it's a win-win win, win, win. And books just give you different perspectives. So that's how it can make you more financially stable. You learn about money. You learn what you should do with it. You learn about different budgeting methods. You learn about, Ooh, I've been doing this all wrong. Or I've been thinking completely off base about this. I'm, I'm not thinking right when it comes to money. Let me, let me dial myself back in. There's a ton of books out there. Some popular ones are like the total money makeover, the richest man in Babylon, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, I Will Teach You to Be Rich, Think and Grow Rich. Those books are fire. Check those out. But also check my book out, The Wealth Journey, Shameless Plug. But it's not just about specifically finances. It could be stuff about your industry. Like if you're into management or leadership, you can check out leadership books. What that can do is help you improve as a leader. What that can do is increase your income, which then makes you more financially stable. It helps you make more sound decisions. And I've done that a lot. I've read several leadership books and I've been doing so for six years. And I think that has definitely taken me a step up and has leveled me up very quickly within my career and moving up and mentoring other people and all that good stuff. So it's not just about that. It could be about anything. It could be about relationships. It could be about spirituality. It could be about mental health. All these things are going to make you more stable as a person, which then is going to make you more financially stable. And you're going to set higher and higher standards for yourself because you're going to hear from people who have held themselves to such a high standard that now they are to the moon in success. And there's no reason why you can't learn from them and then get similar results. The only thing I will caution you on is You need to apply what you read and not just read like it's just a book club where you're going to meet and then talk about how interesting the book is. Like, that's great and that's dandy, but it's about getting results for your life. And I'll also caution you, make sure you have free thought when you're reading these books because there are going to be things that you definitely disagree with and there's going to be things that you agree with. And you you should always challenge 
a way of thinking if you're not feeling a way about it. And they might be right. They might be wrong. It's uh, specific to your personal situation, but you really got to think these things through and not just say, oh, well, someone smarter than me wrote it, so it must be perfect for me to do. Not necessarily true. That's all I want to say. But anyway, I will be having a book club. It'll be a different type of book club, though, but it'll be. I'm going to have a book club on my Patreon, so sign up for my Patreon if you want to. You can catch it up here, but it's going to be dope. I'm going to just have book recommendations. I'm going to be telling you guys what I'm reading, what I'm getting out of it, stuff like that. It's going to be super cool. It's going to be very interactive. And yeah, read. It is extremely important. It's probably the most important thing that you could learn in like regular school where you're learning how to read, write, you know, do math, all that stuff. I think reading is probably the most important skill out of all of those. Calculators can do math for you. So I know they told you in school that you're, you're, you're not going to have a calculator when you're an adult line. I've been having access to a calculator for a long time. Anyway, let me not get off topic. Three, you want to have a work habit. And this is a super simple one. This, for me, I like to be in the habit of working, whether it's before work or after work. This is what keeps me most consistent. This is what keeps more dollars rolling in. So let me give you some examples. Let's say you have a job and you get behind on your emails pretty quickly, but you have access to a work phone and you have a work laptop. There's nothing stopping you from waking up a little early, starting your regular morning routine, whatever the case is. And then towards the end or even towards the middle of your morning routine, spending like 30 minutes to an hour knocking those emails down. And now that's one task for the day that you've got finished super early on before you even step foot into the office. I do this all the time and it actually helps a lot because now you're not gonna be stressed out when you get there and be weighed down by all that responsibility. That's just one example. But another thing I do now is daily, I, I write down my YouTube ideas. I set a timer for 30 minutes to an hour and I'm like, all right, I'm just gonna spend this time. I'm gonna have like some music playing in so I can really get my mind going but I'm going to think of all the ideas that are just in my mind right now. What videos am I going to be making? This makes me more stable on YouTube. This makes me more consistent on YouTube because I used to just wait until the week of to come up with the video ideas. And that's extremely stressful because you're going to overthink and be like, oh, I don't know if they want that. And then you're going to be like, oh, I don't want to make a video about that. And it's, it's going to be horrible because at least if I have a list of ideas to choose from and then I put them into my box for this week, for example, I'm gonna be like, okay, cool. This is what I'm gonna make a video about. And then I can already start thinking throughout the week. These are the topics I'm gonna to talk about within this video. It's already gonna be planned and then boom, I'm recording next thing I know, it's done. That's an example of a work habit. Editing videos every day, thinking about what my next project is gonna be, thinking about what my next book is gonna be. These are examples of work habits. It makes me more financially stable and it's going to lead to financial freedom because it's bringing more money in. And the best way to save, to budget, to have more money in your bank account, to have more investments is to increase your income and get that accumulation going. And even if you didn't have like a side business like I do, that's fine. Like that's a normal thing like that for people to have jobs. There's nothing wrong with that. And that could be your only hustle. That's fine. But if you make yourself the best at it and you separate yourself from everyone else, you will either intentionally or unintentionally increase your income. I've applied this at work too and I've moved up and the money is there. And just off of that one promotion alone, I'm able to do so much more. And I was making good money then, but I'm making even better money now. And that is just a blessing. And I think that if you make this a habit, you will be a standout and you will be an absolute rock star in whatever workplace, business, or whatever it is that you're doing because your, your mind is constantly on improvement. And this is a really simple one, but it's super cool and it's super effective. It's actually off an interesting theory, which I'll talk about in just a second, but here is the habit. Ask yourself every single day, like when you wake up, ask yourself every single day, what are five things that I can do that will improve my life. The funny thing is a lot of us already know the things that we need to do to get to where we want to be. We just don't do them. And a lot of it is because we don't take the time to write those things down every day and then actually apply those things. And those are the two things that separate you from your goals a lot of times. And it doesn't have to just be money related. It could be anything. It could be, man, I feel like I'm always rushing to, to get to work on time. So you know what? Here's something that'll make my life easier. I could iron my clothes, like a week's worth of clothes, iron those, have them hanging up. By the time it's time for me to go back to work, 
All my clothes are already laid out. I don't have to pick and choose and stress. What am I going to wear today? It's already ironed out, laid out for me. Put it on. Boom, boom, boom. We're good to go. That's going to make your life easier. That's going to make you more stable and on time to work. You get what I'm saying? You may feel like your money is just a complete mess and it's just chaotic. Okay, well, let me organize it. Let me budget for it. Let me download the app Mint like I talked about in the last video. This is going to make your life easier. I'm not where I want to be in life. Okay, well, what things am I struggling in right now? Well, right now I'm struggling with just communicating with people and, and, you know, getting along with people and collaborating and working as a team. Okay, well, check out this book called How to Win Friends and Influence People. I can read a book about communication. I can read a book about people and psychology and how I can operate better as a human being. You know what I'm saying? Like you can do so many things that can make your life easier. And maybe you won't have all the answers, but you'll have a starting point. Man, I don't know the first thing about investing, but I hear that you can make a lot of money doing it. Okay, well, read Money Master the Game. And even if you don't know these books off the top of your head, you can definitely look up. You can go to Google, literally, or YouTube and just say, what book should I read if I want to get better in X, Y, Z? And Google is going to give you a handy dandy list. Here you go. Now you have a whole library, literally, of books to choose from. There's always a way to make your life easier. Full on. This is going to give your life full on stability. And I'm just going to say this. Life is very stressful. Life is a very mentally intense experience. And... I think we should all practice having a very good mental health because that is going to be the one thing that gets you through and so you don't fall apart when catastrophic things happen or even seemingly catastrophic things happen. Sometimes it's just that one thing that can set you off the edge. You could be having a good day, then boom, bad news. Boom, another thing happens. Boom, someone looks at you the wrong way. Boom, somebody almost sideswipes you. Boom, the waitress was rude to you. Boom, your credit card got declined. Boom. You go home and you, you held it all together, but then you drop the milk. Now it's everywhere and you break down. That's real stuff right there. And something that I think that can help you has definitely helped me with just life. And I am probably the most, or I, I wouldn't say the most, probably the second most mentally strong person that I know, like just in life, just to be honest with you. And that's not to brag. It's just to say that. I've been through very chaotic experiences and I've managed to hold myself together and really be mentally strong and then help other people even during that process and not, you know, bleeding on to other people with my problems. But anyway, a really good exercise to do every single day. You can download an app like Morning Pages or you can even put it in your notes app or whatever the case is. But I like Morning Pages because it caps you out at a certain like number or it doesn't cap you out, but basically it doesn't register as being completely done for the day until you hit a certain amount of words. I think it's like 500 words. You can really articulate how you feel about stuff, but write down how you feel every single day. Because when you do that, you really start typing out what's on your mind. It's basically a fancy way of saying what's on your mind. And a lot of times when people ask me, what are you thinking about? Sometimes I don't know. And sometimes I do. But you need to ask yourself, okay, what am I thinking about right now? Okay, well, you know, I'm thinking about, you know, you know man, I really want to make more money. I really want to learn about X, Y, Z. I want to learn how to code. I want to learn how to budget better. I want to learn how to invest I've been watching YouTube videos. I've been trying everything I can, but stuff just isn't working. Like maybe I need to get hire a coach. Maybe I need to get a mentor or something like that. Or maybe you're just straight up talking about, you know, I fell back on my schedule a little bit. I was late to work. I, you know, I'm not eating right. I'm not doing the right things that I know would push me ahead, you know, but put it down on paper and then let yourself know how you're really feeling. Because if you don't take the time to do that, you'd be surprised at how much you're going to get out of yourself every single day. If you do this every day and, you know, I would love to tell you that I do this every day, but I don't. I definitely miss some days. I'm a human being just like everyone else, but I try to do it every day. And it actually adds great value because I understand exactly where I'm at mentally throughout the day. So it helps me control and improve my mood throughout the day. And it also can act as a guide even to show me where I need to focus on for that day. Like if that's on your mind, that's bothering you. That's what you need to focus on. Like I was focused. I was thinking heavy about this project one morning. I was like, man. It's not due for a while, but it's really on my mind. Like, I feel like it's really important. I was like, well, that's got to be what you focus on today. 
and I focused heavy on that and it was successful. So things like that can help you out. These make your life easier. This makes you a more financially stable person and just a more stable person in general because you make more stable decisions. You understand where you're at mentally. You work on your physical body. And these are things that I've been doing my entire life. There's nothing theoretical about what I'm saying. These are things that I've been doing for the past five, six years. And I'm telling you right now, they've had great results in my life and I feel amazing. I'm not going to say this makes every single day perfect. I'm not going to say that you're going to be a millionaire by the time you take this advice, but I am going to say that this can help you out a lot. It can bring more dollars into your pocket and it can lead to better financial decisions. But anyway, that is the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. So you can control you, control your finances and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.